and it's going to impact everybody sitting in this room. I cannot see if any other user who's not going to be impacted in this. These are notifications by means of which certain mandatory due diligence processes have been mandated by the government on all intermediaries or anybody in this country who's dealing with third party data and if you don't do that there are a huge number of consequences attached. So the law has been defined in widest possible terms to basically incorporate all kinds of intermediaries. So when you talk of cyber security, I think cyber security cannot be complete without intermediaries. It's not the Airtels, the VSNLs of the world that is important. What's important is anybody who's using third party information. Maybe if you are an employer, if you are a department in your company, and your department you're using you know, information of your employees or third parties, you are going to be covered by this law which is known as the Information Technology Act 2000 and huge number of uh, compliance requirements. A couple of years back we had the famous Bazi.com case where a CEO of a Bazi had to suddenly go behind bars for no rhyme or reason. His only, uh, shall I say, f fault was that there was some sen uh, obscene content information on his blog. But thanks to that, there was a huge debate and then India saw the 26-11 Mumbai attacks. Well, we've seen large number of instances, but I think the trigger was the 26-11 and within 30 days, the government had amended uh, the Information Technology Act 2000 and had come up with the amended IT Act. This amended IT Act is extremely relevant because it talks of, for the first time, the concept of cyber security. Now, we thought we'd be talking in thin air when we talk of cyber security. For the first time, we have given a legal definition of what really constitutes cyber security and what are companies or users required to do when you talk about uh, the concept of cyber security. This is just a history, so I'm just go going to take it off. This is the amendments have already come into force. Rules have now come in. The rules, the notification that I talked to. So the new Indian amended IT Act is your law that relates to use of computers, computer systems, networks, computer resources and communication devices and all kinds of your phones and smartphones are now thanks, thankfully covered under the new law. Now, which effectively means it's not just smartphone, any kind of a communication device which is used to communicate audio, video, image or text is brought under the ambit of law and there are certain specific requirements of uh, due diligence that is expected of users. This is how the law defines cyber security. Protecting information, equipment, devices, computer, computer resource, communication devices and information stored therein from unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification and destruction. Well, it's not just getting a definition in place. The government has also given upon itself the power to prescribe security procedures for and practices for various electronic records. Some of them are in the process of being notified as we talk. Now these basically talk that any entity can actually apply security practices and procedures upon electronic records in order for these records to be treated as secure electronic records within the ambit of the law. Now for the first time we have now come across with the concept of sensitive personal data and information. The next time you gave your uh, details when you were getting a new phone connection or whatever, uh, you would not even think twice, but the law now says, okay, whatever is sensitive personal data and information is protected and in case if you are an entity who is dealing, handling or processing sensitive personal data, then you are mandated to do re reasonable security practices and procedures. You don't do that, you have a huge exposure. There's a criminal exposure that your top management could go behind bars from three years to life imprisonment. Your, you have a civil exposure, you could be exposed to damages that could be up to 5 crore rupees per contravention. Now this is huge and this is only for a limited set of circumstances. So don't think the cap is on 5 crores. In case if you are dealing with sensitive personal data and information that you are processing, handling or dealing in any manner and you are required under law to maintain reasonable security practices, procedures, you don't follow them. And as a thanks to your non-following, your uh, negligence, some kind of a wrongful loss or gain is caused to somebody, it's unlimited damages that you will be exposed to. So it's no longer the comfort factor of 5 crores. 
its unlimited damages that the new amendments have now provided for. Now, body corporates have been defined in huge terms. Any legal entity would purely qualify as body corporates. What are these reasonable security practices and procedures? These are the procedures that have, will have to be adopted effectively from the 11th of April 2011 uh, by every legal entity that's dealing with sensitive personal data and information. So it's not just the Airtels of the world, it's not the VSNLs, it's even a Claridge's hotel which is having information about its clients, which is sensitive information that they are required now to deal with reasonable security practices and procedures. Now, sensitive personal data is something that's going to be distinguished from normal data or third party data. And the government has already notified certain categories of data which will qualify. Their protection is also uh, the mandate responsibility of the relevant entity who is handling them. Now, if you are using a, somebody's stolen mobile phone, think again, because under the new amendment law, you are now committing an offense which is punishable with three years imprisonment and five lakh rupees fine. India, for the first time, has become the, uh, one of the very few nations across the world who has come across with a comprehensive provision on cyber terrorism. In fact, I have studied almost all cyber laws across the world, and I find that the way cyber terrorism has been defined under the Indian Amended IT Act is so vast and so huge to be most comprehensive provision that's existing on any law book across the world. And that is thanks to the 2611, but that's also giving huge amount of powers uh, to the government. And that's required given the challenges that cyber criminals are today posing to the security of the nation. So if you are doing anything which is intending to threaten the unity, integrity, security, sovereignty of India, or to strike terror in the hearts of the people or a section thereof, and by means of your activity you deny or cause the denial of any person who is authorized to access a computer resource, or further, you attempt to penetrate or a computer resource without authorization, you introduce a computer contaminant or a computer virus, and by means of your conduct, you are likely to cause death or injury to various persons or damages. That huge scenario has now been brought within the ambit of cyber terrorism. Cyber terrorism has now been made a heinous offense punishable with life imprisonment and fine. So it's not just these activities, it's like what Estonia saw a couple of years back. Those kind of incidences have also now been brought within the ambit. So the next time somebody tries to destabilize India by critically impacting its critical information infrastructure, he has to be prepared for life imprisonment and fine. That's what the new message of the law is. Further, any activity which imp uh, prejudicially impacts the security of the state, friendly relations with other nations, or for public order, decency, or morality. Well, all of these are now specifically brought within the ambit of cyber terrorism. I think apart from cyber terrorism, the government, uh, through the new legislation, has come up with a nodal agency. This is known as the Computer Emergency Response Team of India, which has been made the nodal agency for cyber security. So while it has been made a nodal agency, there is still no national agency available. Further, this evening when I am talking with you, India does not still have a national cyber security policy in place. And therefore, uh, there is a draft that's come up for public comments, but huge things remain to be done. Intermediary, if you are an intermediary in India, you will now have to tighten your belts. And the way it's defined, let's read it. I, any uh, intermediary with respect to any particular electronic record means any person who on behalf of another rec person receives, stores or transmits that record or provides any service with respect to that record and includes telecom service providers, network service providers, internet service providers, web hosting companies, search engines, online payment sites, online auction sites, marketplaces, cyber cafes. You name it and you have it. So the way it's so defined, eight out of ten companies would qualify as intermediaries. So while the law has to be complemented for becoming extremely vast, uh, on the other hand, there is far more stringent obligations that have now been put on intermediaries, more so in the context of cyber security. They are also being mandated to retain traffic data and they are required to give this to the government. If it's not given on time, if not retained, that is itself an offense punishable with three years imprisonment and fine. Further, data preservation is also now made the mandatory duty. Earlier, you had these telcos who would say, you know, we don't, we don't st uh, store data beyond two months. Well, they can no longer say that on your face today. 
because the law now says they will have to now retain it for a period of one year. Now, minimum. It's not that the one year is great, but one year also has huge amount of compliance and storage costs. Traffic data has been defined. And not only the normal data, but even traffic data will now be required to be sa saved by the concerned uh, in, uh, legal entity who's handling this kind of traffic data, whether you are an intermediary. You don't do that? Well, there are legal consequences that you have to face. So broadly speaking, from a mere e-commerce legislation, this now has become the Indian Cyber Security Legislation, the amended IT Act. If that's not sufficient, huge amount of powers of interception, monitoring, blocking, decryption have already been given to the government. These are thanks to the 2611 Mumbai attacks, and these are applicable to any computer system, network, and even communication device that's physically located in our country. That's a huge kind of powers that have already been given. So there's some debate that's happening in the public uh, domain as to what, whether these are right or wrong, but good, bad, or worse, this is the law of the land for you. More importantly, the government has the power to disclose or demarcate any system as a protected system. You try accessing the protected system, the mere attempt earns you 10 years behind bars. So that's the amended Indian law. The certain is playing some remarkable good work in this direction as a nodal agency, but I think we need to do far more. The law needs to be already strengthened. The law that was amended in 2009 is already obsolete the next day after amendments. India requires another set of amendments because with now social networking coming in, with P2P pressures coming in and other things, there are a large number of issues that have to be dealt with. I think my time is uh, closing, so I'm just, just like to close by saying that it is a constantly evolving paradigm. There is no one law uh, that you can say this is going to be enough for our lifetimes. The IT Act is a constant mechanism that will have to be improved, amended, modified, and be made in sync with the times as we go along to meet with the challenges of cybersecurity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.